This is Cambodian style hot pot. What's in the soup? Sour, garlic, chili paste, coconut milk, a bit of tamarind, and pork broth. My friend Moni knows how much we love hot pot, so she came over and prepared a whole spread so we could experience the Cambodian style hot pot that her family makes at home. She asked us if we liked coconut milk and if we didn't mind a stronger flavor for the broth. Personally, I love dishes with stronger flavors and I love anything cooked in coconut milk. I looked it up and I think this is called Yao Hon. The ingredients look similar, but if it's something else, please let me know. So her dad simmered these pork bones for hours along with other aromatics, spices, and coconut milk, which made this broth super thick and creamy. I just thought that it was so sweet that they would do this for us. And you know, the broth definitely had a stronger flavor compared to other hot pots I've had. I'm not sure if it's a fish paste or another fermented sauce, but what I do know is I think this is my new favorite style of hot pot. Before we eat Mongolian hot pot, did you know about Inner and Outer Mongolia? Inner Mongolia is part of China and Outer Mongolia is its own independent nation. We're scratching Inner Mongolia off our world map because I read that Little Sheep Hot Pot was based in Inner Mongolia. You can go to the Little Sheep restaurants and have hot pot there, but they have this spicy base available for us to make it at home. And we wanted to have a full on hot pot party with all the ingredients. We got thinly sliced beef, pork and lamb, two types of noodles, various leafy Asian vegetables, lotus root, radish, and our absolute favorite, this deep fried fish ball with creamy roe inside. Be careful when you bite into it though, it's hot. I find this hot pot to be really flavorful, salty, and spicy, which I like because I don't have to rely on using sauces to make the hot pot ingredients taste good. But we also have a huge selection of different sauces to dip it in just in case. Where should we eat next? Have you ever had hot pot? To me, it's being like in a food theme park. There's a variety of hot pot styles for different cultures, but today we're scratching Japan off our world map. Momo Paradise is open again, and I wanted to bring you and our world map project along for the gifted meal. Here's how it works. Pick your soup bases. We got tonkatsu, which is a pork bone broth, and sukiyaki, which is a mixture of soy sauce, sugar, and mirin. You also get to pick the meats you wanna eat, and they'll bring it out for you. And it's awesome that their ingredients bar is open. I love that they've got things like fish tofu, wood ear mushroom, and burdock root. Okay, my favorite was the sukiyaki. You get a pasteurized egg, which is cooked to a temperature that's safe to eat. Take your meat, swish it around for a few seconds. It cooks really quickly. Dip it in the egg and enjoy. It gets so creamy from the egg. You can also create your own sauces to dip your meats, veggies, and noodles in. Seriously, there's so much you can do here. And I don't drink often, but I will drink if it's a sparkling peach sake and soju with peach jelly. And I didn't even get to show you their milk teas and their ice cream. Ugh, I wish I could eat more. If you built your own hot pot, what would you choose? Wanna make Japanese hot pot at home? One style of Japanese hot pot is called sukiyaki. I recently had sukiyaki at Momo Paradise. When I came home to edit the video, I got hungry again and incepted myself to eat more sukiyaki. So for Father's Day, I decided that our family will have sukiyaki at the park. And for that, I needed to make sukiyaki sauce. So this is the sauce that you'll be cooking your vegetables and your meats in. And this is super quick to make. You just throw everything together and then wait for it to boil, turn off the flame, and then store it until you need to use it. So this sukiyaki sauce is based from Just One Cookbook's blog. I just doubled the recipe in case we needed a lot. I don't think we need this much though. This is really strong on its own and you'll need separate water or dashi to add into the sauce to water it down. And to really complete the sukiyaki experience, grab some pasteurized eggs to dip your meat meats in. It's so good. I recommend you try it before passing it up. And in case you wanted to do this at home too, I'll post a video with everything else I prepared for having sukiyaki at the park. Stay tuned! Which ingredients do you need for Japanese sukiyaki hot pot? For Father's Day, we had sukiyaki at the park. And these are the ingredients we grab to feed our family. The meat is super important. We like to grab the pre-sliced thin cuts of meat because these will cook within seconds in a boiling pot. We like to get a variety between beef, pork, and lamb. We also love to have different types of fish balls and fish cakes. They've got different shapes, textures, and seasoning. They do take a few minutes longer to cook compared to the meats. And tofu is a nice to have as filler. And then you can choose a variety of mushrooms and veggies. We like to choose sturdy or leafy greens so they can hold up in the pot. We always gotta have shungiku, enoki mushrooms, and maybe napa cabbage or bok choy. It doesn't have to be any of these. You can choose whatever you like to eat. I also like to bring a variety of sauces and chilies for extra flavor and pasteurized raw eggs to dip your meat in to make them creamier. Mm. For noodles, we like to use shin ramen because they've got that special chewy texture compared to other noodles. You just boil the noodles and then toss the seasoning packets away. And finally, you've 
got the sukiyaki base. Watch my previous video to see how I make this. And you just mix it with water. Next video, I'll show you the tools to use. Want to do Japanese hot pot with family or friends outside? In the first two videos, I showed how to make sukiyaki sauce and ingredients. Now I'll show you the tools. Bring at least one burner and extra butane fuel, a pot, a pan, and a large bowl for noodles. Have some water for boiling in one pot where all the noodles will be cooked in. I cooked it all at once so nobody has to wait for noodles. In the same burner or a separate burner, heat up a wide pan for the sukiyaki base. This is where all the veggies and meats will be simmering. For your tools, you'll need a bunch of tongs and preferably a spider strainer to get all your ingredients in and out of the pan. I also recommend having bowls or little cups to make your side sauces and the pasteurized egg to dip your meats in. And the rest are typical utensils you'd need like chopsticks or forks, maybe some spoons just in case, napkins, paper plates, drinks, and everything else you may need for the best sukiyaki picnic experience. Same old picnic food gets kind of boring. We decided to do sukiyaki for Father's Day because it was simple but super fun for everyone to do. My family enjoyed it and it's probably not the last time we'll be doing hot pot at the park. Now that you know you can do hot pot at the park, would you try it? This is one of the most epic homemade hot pots I've ever had. Lisa's friend James prepared this whole meal for us. He had homemade broth, sauces, and a bajillion possible ingredients to cook in the pot. So check out how he does his whole setup. And then my favorite burger too. Fish dumpling and shrimp. I love this one. Yeah, this is the second one that I've done at somebody's house, so I have a lot of the stuff already. So many. It's only one pack. It will literally just sit there and soak up all the juices. Oh. I've never had these before. I was like, oh, they have cheese in them. cheese? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, this is my five hour master broth. Napa and onions and corn and ginger. And then I actually got the pork bones mm -hmm. from a local farmer. Um, yeah, and it's his, fresh. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, it's literally. Do you want some of the cuttlefish bones? Mm. Watch part two to see how it all cooks. If you've never had hot pot at home, try it out. It's a super fun way to have a meal with family and friends. In the video before this, Lisa's friend James was setting up this epic hot pot dinner for us. Now that the setup is done, you get to see how easy it is to just dip and cook whatever you want in it. There's just so many things. Exactly, that's the fun part. That's where oh. all these little basket things come in. Blood cakes, let's go. Oh, rub your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Soak up all that. Oh, more. Mm -hmm. oh. It's cheese. <laughs> it's cheese. That's 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 cheese. So well. Can I get the drink? Okay. No, but I can go grab some. Is there lime downstairs? Oh, so, dry fish, dry oil. Oh my gosh. Sorry, what, what have you all had? Chicken powder is key. Mm. Mm. Uh, they're uh, signing. I walk in, and my dad's like, oh. Danny, where's, where's my bike? He's like, Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good quality sesame oil. It's fine. I was like, you were going to give us the option to make our own sauce? Yes. I didn't know it could be this intricate. Yeah. I just go and get like ponzu. Can you guess what's inside this fish ball I'm cooking? Hint. The first time I had this was at Little Sheep Mongolian Hot Pot. And in the next video, I'll show you all the ingredients we gathered to make hot pot at home. Another hint, it's creamy and has similar flavor to what it's encased in. Final hint, Finding Nemo. Ah, this stuff is so good. You can find it in the frozen section in Asian supermarkets. It's creamy fish roe, AKA little fish eggs. We always have to have this in hot pot. Try it. Would you pick Asian food or American food? If I had to pick Asian food. 
every time. Yes, yes, yes. Part of that is because Asian food is so vast. There's so many different countries in Asia with different regional specialties. And I was born eating Filipino food. I remember we'd eat Chinese food on special occasions too. And I was born eating Filipino food. And when we'd eat out, we would have Chinese food. However, I've spent most of my life here in the US and I can't deny that there are times I crave American food. But not gonna lie, I also don't know exactly what falls in the category of American food. During 4th of July, I can't help but crave a hot dog. When Doug and I came back from a trip to the Philippines, I was craving a good old American In-N-Out burger. And the holidays. I love including Filipino dishes in our holiday spreads, but having the traditional American foods really gets me in that festive mood. 